Brett here, and today's Tech Tip Tuesday is going to be about shielded wiring or shielded cabling and the uses for this, what sensors it should be on, and then how to properly terminate the shielding. So you may or may not be familiar with the term shielded wire or shielded cabling. What this is, is electrical cables within a shielding, within a sheathing, an electrical system. The shielding itself is a metal braid that runs over top of the wires to protect the wires from electromagnetic interference or noise. These are typically used in circuits that require very precise, accurate readings, and you want the most accurate signal possible to your ECU. Speed sensors are the most common sensor that shielded wire is used for and needed for. These sensors, if it's a Hall effect sensor or a VR sensor, operate on a very low voltage threshold, and the voltage threshold change counts as a tooth or a pickup point in the ECU, and then it translates that to speed. So any electromagnetic interference or any noise that can be in to the wire from the outside can cause that voltage to change in millivolts and then the, the ecu may pick that up as a tooth or it may uh, freak it out a second a missing tooth and in a speed sensor now you're going to have an erratic signal or on an engine speed sensor a, cam a crankshaft position sensor or a camshaft position sensor the ecu is going to pick this up as a missing tooth it's going to drop sync you're going to have an engine backfire um, and you're going to have a bad time this is a very overlooked part in the electrical system of a car a lot of people will use you know if it's a pre-terminated harness you get from the ECU manufacturer, uh, maybe it just comes with regular wire without any shielded cable. All speed sensors, camshaft, crankshaft, wheel speed, drive shaft speed, in my opinion, should have a dedicated shielded pair or a shielded three wire cable going to that sensor to protect it from outside noise to give you the most accurate and the most stable data possible. Shielded wire, shielded cabling is available in, in many different formats. You can get it with two wires on the inside, three wires. I believe you can buy it up to six wires. Most automotive purposes, you're going to have a three wire twisted pair, or like this one is a two wire twisted pair. This would be used for a VR type style sensor, where a three wire twisted pair is going to be used for a Hall effect style sensor that has a rep for voltage and a sensor ground going to it. Uh, if you have a three wire twisted pair, you only need two. You can just use two wires out of it, um, and it's going to make no effect. So essentially, as long as you have a uh, pair of wires that you need, shielding over top of it, you're gonna be able to get the job done to uh, the proper standard. One thing to note about the shielded cable is the wire by itself with the shielding over the wire, uh, that's not the end of it. That doesn't protect your wires fully against the noise that we're talking about. You're gonna to have to go ahead and ground this shielding to chassis ground. So to do that, we're gonna to need to strip this back, terminate it, and then run that to a chassis ground. So we're gonna show you a couple ways to do that. There's more than one way to achieve this. And for the best use, you're going to do this on the ECU side. So as you can see here, we have one of our right drive shaft speed Hall effect sensors, one of our new sensors. And this sensor has an optional uh, cable that comes with it, it's the M5 connector. And this cable is long, it's 16 feet. So this way you can run this all the way to your ECU of the car. If you have a shielded cable and you have it cut or broken into four different sections and you have connectors through there, you must pass through the shielding through that connector. If you don't pass the shielding through the connector, then your whole wire isn't protected against that electromagnetic noise. In this instance, we have our sensor on the back of the car. We're running through. If we have a bulkhead here, we, we, you know, we pass through the ground, and then we're going to get up to the ECU side. The shielding cable, when it comes, it's going to be solid like this. I have this one stripped back, so you have your outside sheathing. You have your, your braid on the inside. Some may or may not have like a paper insulation around the wires, and then you have the wires themselves inside there. So the first thing we're going to do is cut back the outside insulation to expose the braid. We're going to then trim the braid back to the length that we want it so we can do our ground termination. And then we're going to go ahead and do our ground termination to that braid. Now, when we talk about the ground termination to the shielding wire, uh, I briefly mentioned earlier that you're going to do that on the ECU side of the circuit. So what that means is at the connector to the ECU, the ECU pins will go on this. This will plug into the ECU. We're then going to ground terminate, chassis ground terminate our shielding at this point of the wire to our chassis ground. What this does is any electric, any electric noise coming out of these wires will then pass into the shielding cable and then go directly to the chassis ground to eliminate them. If they're not, if this isn't grounded, it's just going in the cable, it's just bouncing off, it's not really doing anything. It's protecting it from stuff maybe from the outside, but if it doesn't have a place to ground that voltage, it can still get into the wire. Now, it's important to note that you only ground the ECU side. You do not ground the other side of the wire. If you end up grounding both sides of the shield, you'll actually create a ground loop and other 
circuits that are draining into the chassis ground will then come into this wire and actually you'll be creating noise in this instead of eliminating noise. So that's the opposite that you want to do. So it's important to note, uh, said it a couple times now, we're going to ground it at the ECU side of the circuit. Only. An alternative to a shielding cable is you've probably seen in a lot of communication systems like CAN or even if you ever looked in Ethernet cable, you'll see a twisted pair wire like this. So inside the shielding, the wires are twisted, uh, but you may see a twisted pair wire like this without the outside shielding. Twisting the wires on the same circuit together like this will still decrease the amount of noise going in there. As the current passes through the wire, it will make an electronic, electromagnetic loop, it's called. It's a circle around the wire that gets transmitted out and can get transmitted to the wires that are laying next to it. When you twist the wires like this, it makes the loops a lot smaller and they're broken up so they have less chance of, of transmitting that noise into the wire next to it. So if you have some other sensors on your harness that twist like this, um, it's always a good idea if this is going out to a map sensor or pressure sensor, or if you have your CAN network, you can hand twist your wires and not necessarily need to use the shielded pair on every single set. This is the foolproof way. If you see helicopters or aviation, every single sensor, every single electric thing will be ran uh, through a shielded cable, but on an automotive system, generally, like I said, we do the important speed sensors, crankshaft sensor, camshaft sensor, wheel speed sensor, drive shaft sensor. So now we're gonna show you a couple options of how to terminate the shielding part of the wire and how to strip it back. So depending on the shielded cable that you have, some have a more rubberized outer sheathing and some have a more plastic outer sheathing. Either way, this uh, system of stripping it back will work the same. You're gonna verify of how much you want stripped back. You're gonna then use a razor blade and I'm gonna go around the outside. And then we're gonna go down the lengthwise. And there is that stainless braid behind here. So the razor blade, the wires are protected from the razor blade when you're doing this. I'm gonna go ahead now, break this off. Now you can see we're to the second layer of the braid. So now at this point, we need to determine how much of the braid we want exposed and how much of the wire we want exposed. What we're gonna to do to use our first grounding method is we're gonna use a Raycam solder connector to connect our ground wire to the braid. So to do this, I take about a, a finger's worth of braid and I'm gonna hold it tight and slide down the rest, make it wide. Then we can take a pair of side cutters and cut the braid without risking damaging the wire. And we'll pull off the end. Now we have a piece of braid exposed and we have our electrical wires there. Actually, this is a little too much, so I'm gonna go back and get a little bit more. Now these Raycam solder connectors are available. These inside here, this red dot, that's so that's actually solder and the red is fluxed over the outside. Now the blue part is a heat shrink and then this end part actually has a sealant. So what we're gonna do now, is slide this over, like coming from this way, so it doesn't try to affect the braid. And then the solder is gonna go over the braid and then we're gonna introduce another wire. So this wire will go to chassis ground, wherever that is. This can be a full length, or if you have multiple crane cam sensors in a line, I would usually make these short and then splice them together to get one braid. We can bring this wire in from the front, or we can bring it out from the back, depending on how your loom is routed. But essentially, our wire is stripped back. This is gonna be soldered to the braid by the solder that is in this ray cam connector. Bring that in here, bring this here. Now our solder is over the wire and over the braid. Now what we're gonna do is take our heat gun. We're gonna use our heat gun to melt this. We only wanna use a heat gun on this style connector. You don't wanna use an open flame or a lighter like you would some heat shrink in a pinch. Um, it's gonna be a pretty hot heat gun. You're gonna see it melt. And then until you see the solder actually melt, you get down on there, is it successfully done? So I'm gonna plug in and the heat gun I have here, hopefully strong enough to. You can tell it changed shape. See this, the flux go down, now you can see the solder starting to melt. I'm going to rotate it. The solder melts it all the way. And that's it. You can see now the before and after of what this solder connector looks like. The solder has successfully melted, has connected our ground wire to the shielding. We can now terminate these to our ECU 
and this will run to chassis ground. And now this length of wire to the sensor will be protected from outside noise. Ready on this one. All right, so now we're gonna show you the second method to get our ground attached, and that's just gonna be with a normal splice connector. So we're gonna strip this back, the same, same method we used last time, with our razor blade, roll it, not cut my rife mat. Got it going here. Now, this one we're going to leave the shielding part a little longer to give us more to work with. Cut off the braid. Now what we're going to do is to get this braid actually off of the wire. So we're going to kind of untwist it here. This way is a little messier, but it is easier to find a splice connector than it is ray cam connectors, and they are less expensive. Now that we got our braid twisted back, we're gonna kind of twist it up, get it like a normal conductor, cut it the length. So now we have our shielding there. We're gonna use a normal crimp splice, slide it down, get our insulated wire in there. And then with our normal crimpers, we're gonna crimp that down. Now this will require, you know, a second part of heat shrink that will go over. Even this other connector, you're gonna do uh, some normal DR25 or something over this, but at least this is shrunk and this is sealed. So it's protecting this connection. This connection uh, isn't protected at all right now. We could put a piece of sheathing over this and shrink it down. We would have some connection, but again, this is just another alternative to get our shielding terminated to ground uh, with a solder connector from Raycam or just a normal splice connector on our shielded cable. As I mentioned earlier, we want to ground the, sh the cable shielding at the UCU side and have it uninterrupted all the way to the sensor that the signal is going to read on. And if you do have to have a pass through, if you have a, a bulkhead connector or if you have a Deutsch connector, someone in line, uh, that's okay. All you need to do is at that connector, pass through the grounded part. So the same as you did on the ECU side, you're going to get the shielding to a wire and then you're just going to use a connector with an extra pin than what you're using and you're going to do that to one of the terminals and on the other side you're going to do the same exact thing so that way the, the chassis ground shield then is passing through the connector and going all the way to the sensor okay so this was uh you know a nice simple tech tip here but this is the the basics all of our electrical videos are basically going to be uh intros and some helpful tips to help educate you and if you want to learn more i suggest you learn more uh, you can look further you can uh, email or call in if you have a direct question i don't mind uh, helping out with that but again, shielded cabling, in my opinion, if you're building a harness or if you're buying a harness already built, uh, is a must for speed sensors, crankshaft sensor, camshaft sensor, wheel drive shaft sensors, uh, this is a must. Uh, you'll get a lot of, you see guys with uh, crank sync problems or this or that with you know missing camshafts, misfires. A lot of that could just be in the wiring because it's getting noise from outside. It's ran along a power cable for the water pump or, or you know, we've seen a lot of instances where, where things like that can cause a uh, random uh, cam sync failures. So shielded cable is going to protect you from that. Uh, it's not very difficult to do. It's not extremely expensive compared to normal wiring. Have a couple methods to do that. So again, take away shielded cables for speed sensors, ground the shielding to chassis ground, not to the ECU zero volt sensor ground. Do it to a chassis ground on the ECU side of the connector. Again, like I mentioned before, this is why we sell our drive shaft speed sensor with this extended lathe shielded cable because we want to take um, you know, the legwork out of you from trying to have to locate this and find this. This has pre-terminated the connector on the end. So all you have to do now is ground our shielding, wire it to the ECU, and you're going to have the best drive shaft signal possible. If you guys have any questions about shielding cable, please put it below. I'll try to help you out or email us on the tech line. And we're going to make more videos like this. So if you have any suggestions, put them down in the comments. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time.